good morning. This is a spot exactly in front of our apartment that I am hoping to go take our car, which is like four blocks away. And hopefully the spot will still be here when I drive the car on the corner. It is the middle of the work day, but I saw this parking spot move. And when you live in the city, this is just some of the things that you do. day has ended so the fun begins it is so nice and it's amazingly beautiful out so <laughs> we're gonna go to this little park and see if we got a little kid swing this is a park that's not too far from us really cool because there's like neighborhood toys that people just like leave and i think sir oh, huh? oh you're we've seeing that seat thing oh i know yeah we've never been in here before even though we used to live over here but there is little kid swings we're gonna what give it a whirl that looks like it's a group teeter-totter, sitting. So much fun. This is a cool playground. Yeah. James, your parents may have gotten a little overzealous. Yeah. Can you for this still? We should have brought like, what's that like nursing pillow? Yeah. Or like the, the boppy pillow? Let's see. Do you like that? Oh. oh. Only terrified slightly for dad. Yeah. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> He's loving it. Yeah. He's really used to it. And his tummy. Yeah. Wow. Here's a big old kid in the big old city playing on the swing. Wow. <laughs> Trying to get me? Trying to get me, huh? Oh, it's windy. Ooh. 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 <laughs> Ooh. 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 Why are you the cutest kid in town, huh? walked over to Wrigley. It's pretty windy. There's actually like a wind advisory today. Um, but Gallagher Way is open and the TV is on. So we're hopeful when the game starts. They're, the Cubs are in Atlanta and they'll play the game. Well, there's the game's first pitches in 35 minutes. So we're just gonna chill here and see if they like show the game here. Yeah. I don't think we'll stay here the whole night because yeah. we have plans to do stuff around the apartment. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to get out. It's so I mean, we've said it a million times. It's so it's nice 77 out. 77 degrees here. This feels like the primo Florida months because it's 77, but there's not humidity. Right. I don't know if it's because wind. It just feels like... Keeping it away. Amazing. Oh, it's beautiful. Why play with your Mickey Mouse when you have a strap? It's so much more fun. Hey, nice hat. <laughs> Sun setting in about 35 minutes. Wanted to show you Belmont Harbor. This past weekend was the first weekend that they opened up the bridges to let boats come out into there. 
lagoons, har harbors, I guess is the right word. Look at all those boats. We're gonna see how far I go. I didn't do my half marathon yesterday like I was supposed to. Today's supposed to be an off day, tomorrow's 45 minutes. So I'm just gonna go. I downed some water and a goo before this. It's beautiful weather out. I'll be partly sunlit, partly dark. Very wavy day today. Look at this. Oh, getting the shoes wet today, that's for sure. A lot of people out and about enjoying the windy but warm weather. Okay, while well, daddy runs, baby's gonna snooze and I'm going to cook. Tonight I am making our favorite mushroom gravy. I will link the recipe in the description below. Um, we love it. I think I'm either gonna, I think I'm gonna do it over rice. And then when Peter gets home, I'm actually gonna make some falafel. I got like a, a mix for it, but I want it to be fresh. So I'm kind of waiting to see how long he's going to be running because he went out unsure. He's gonna see how he feels. Um, so at least we're gonna start with the mushroom gravy. Alrighty, so I actually use onions too, just to spunk it up. Got the mushrooms and onions going in oil. Um, once they kind of like get all the liquid out, I'll make a roux. I'm actually gonna use water instead of vegetable broth or stock, whatever it calls for because I don't have any, but trusty soy sauce always helps it out. So super simple, super yummy, one of our favorites. I'm going to go with rice um, for the base. And then I'm gonna get everything prepped for the falafel because I am going to, like, we're gonna eat those wrapped in like romaine lettuce with some sort of hummusy dressing on top and probably like a pepper, tomato, onion slaw situation. So I'm gonna at least get all of that prepped while Peter's gone. Um, he could be home soon. He could be home in an hour. So um, that way at least it's all ready. And I did promise I would eat without him if it got to be too late. So this is the falafel mix I'm using. You just put one of the bags in um, a bowl with a third a cup of water plus two tablespoons let them stand and then fry them up. So I might make mine before Peter gets home, but it's nice that they can just sit and be prepped before, um, so Peter can eat them fresh. So for the gravy, I decided to use this Chobani plain extra creamy to start out with and then I'll use some water. Um, but I forgot I had this. Oat is my favorite milk to cook with because it does not um, have any sort of sweetness to it. And then this is nice where it's extra creamy. Um, definitely would recommend this brand. Okay, added some water in two. Just kept on mixing, mixing. And now for soy sauce and pepper and thyme. And I'm just gonna taste as I go the rest of the way. So super simple. Again, so good. Look at this beautiful skyline. Kind of covered by some lakefront trees, but and this like just after golden hour, boom. Look at that bright moon. Wish I had, wish I had uh, one of our cameras with me, not my cell phone. I think it's a pink moon. Look at that, it's so bright. Lighting up the lake time I run. And guess what? There's the shed, planetarium. I'm going for the half marathon. Look who joined me. Oh, you camera shy? very interested in dinner. Um, I will show you the aftermath of his avocado dinner. At grandma's yesterday, he tried avocado for the first time and loved it. So today I mixed some with coconut milk. And again, it was a hit. Right? Final stretch. Look how bright. That moon is. There's the, there's the skyline. Here's the path, coming up on Fullerton, a couple more miles and we are calling it. It's a good run. Cool breeze, but not too cold. Great to see people out on the lakeshore. 
I'm loving it. Ooh. Just finished, felt good. Oh, how I wish this Ann Sather's right here was open right now. Go for a nice cinnamon roll. All right, I got home. We got your wedding ring. Now oh, Peter takes his wedding ring off when he, when he runs. It's like resized. Yeah. Here's his falafel salad. I ate mine as wraps, but there was just like a weird number of lettuce, so I made yours into a salad. Thank you, I appreciate that. Falafel. And then there's the super appetizing rice and <laughs> gravy, but it's so good. It, it kind of looks like dinty on rice, and I grew up eating that, so pretty pumped. How was your run? Good. I didn't bring enough, like, hydration and... You, like, weren't prepared to be out that long? I wasn't prepared, like... I should have drank a lot more water during the day, and I should have brought some water with. And I only brought one goo, and I should have brought more than one goo, because I brought enough goo to do, like, a six-mile route, not a 13. Yeah, so. and we didn't eat dinner. Yeah, so. So, manja, manja. I need to refuel. All right, I'm home. I'm all freshened up. feel pretty good. Just rolled my legs. Rolling is key to successful running. But tonight, if you haven't noticed, I've been vlogging on our phones a lot. Main reason of that is this here. Look at this. Ready? It's on. Screen doesn't work. So this, the camera's on, and how you can tell is, look at that, when I put my finger over the face sensor, the LED screen on the inside of the viewfinder turns on. So it works and everything, but you just can't see the screen, and so like we use it sometimes, but it's just difficult. Um, so we did a little drop, and that's what caused it, which I'm hoping is just a loose connector. This happened once before, many moons ago, and I took it apart, put it back together, and it worked without seemingly doing anything. So I'm going to attempt the same thing and hope that it works because we don't have insurance anymore. It lapsed out. And so I'm going to take it apart. Hopefully don't break it, and hopefully it fixes, gets fixed. Do you have faith in me? I have so much faith in you. I already did the vlog. Great. And we've got the Dan Barber episode of Chef's Table on. Everybody's seen, not everybody, but a lot of people have seen the Canon M50. But have you seen the Canon M50 like this? Bum, bum, bum. So I took the back console off. I'm going to take the casing of the screen off and I'm going to examine all the wire hookups. Like something here has gone bad. Look, one of these connections. What I did last time is I just examined this wire here that goes to the monitor. Um, couldn't find anything, but when I put it back together, it just all of a sudden worked. So I'm going to look for a cut, a twinge, or something. But if I can't find it, I'm just going to put it back together. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then we know it's kaput. So I also look at the rest of the the gadgets and gizmos and make sure there's no blown fuses or anything or resistors that are openly obvious. Did not fix the phone. Camera. Did not fix the camera. <laughs> We have a plan now. The plan is we have to see if we can find a reliable... Parts person. Parts company person to sell us the piece that I believe is wrong with it. It's gonna be about a buck, 50, 200 bucks. So it's like at that point, the body's like 500, so I think it's worth it. Yeah. Anyway. So we know if you stick around to the end of the vlog, you really like us. Um, and so we wanted to tell you something that we brought up in the live stream the other week um, about reaching out to our fertility clinic again. Booyah. Yeah. So we called them to get a timeline for a future transfer. They left on Saturday night and super soon. Right. But we didn't want to call when we felt ready and then them say, you have to take these steps before we can do anything. And by these steps, it seems like, oh, there's just steps. But in infertility treatment, these steps are months. Right. Um, and we've learned from experience that things don't just happen lickety-split. Um, and then I also wanted to learn, like, different protocols. So typically, um, if you gave birth naturally, you could do another transfer nine months after. But if you have a C-section, it's 12 months after. That's per our doctor. So if you look right. know anybody who did something differently, mm -hmm. we understand that different doctors do things differently. Right. But our doctor is mm -hmm. 9 and 12. Yep. And then tests beforehand. Um, and just a lot of things kind of lead up to that. Also, we found out that our, um, our clinic has 
like requires you to not be nursing when you start your tests because of the different changes in your hormones that really affects it. Um, and so again, it's like things that we needed. It, it feels soon. Our baby is so like, small. Imagine us like calling at 11 months, James being 11 months, like hoping that we can start doing something soon. And they're like, well, James has to be done completely, breast, off, completely off breastfeeding. breastfeeding yeah. And we didn't do that yet. And he was like, they're like, who knows how long that, like that's taking. Right. We're starting that transition now. Right. So we did start weaning him. Um, just starting with formula. He's also having some other foods. His belly will be full no matter what, but we're going to take weeks to make sure it's easy on my body. I know a lot comes with that hormonally. Yeah. Like right now it's just one bottle at the end of the night. Um, right. But I give him rather than nursing. Yeah. And, um, we are aware that like breastfeeding isn't a hundred percent like birth control, but we also just want to prepare ourselves if we do need to do fertility treatment. Um, I'll probably track ovulation and all of that good stuff. So, of course, we would love if my body just knew what to do and, after doing it with yeah, James. And a lot of times that is the case, but a lot of times it isn't. Right. And so we're being proactive and we're being open about it because we know that, you know, a lot of people go through this sort of stuff. And so this is just our experience. And... We'll bring you along. Right. And like, you know, hopefully we don't have to do treatments, but if we do, we're obviously going to do them. But it's crazy because it's even its own different world than the, what we've done previously. Because like then it's called secondary infertility because we mm -hmm. already have a child. Right. Just because you have a baby doesn't mean your infertility is cured by yeah. any means. Um, we're keeping our doctor in Florida. A lot of the testing can be done up here. But that will mean we'll eventually go down to Florida for a transfer and to rest. Means a uh, more on South visit. Right. Um, and yeah, we, we know we want multiple children. We know that time has not always been on our side. And so um, as much as like we're truly relishing in our time with James, like we, want, we just have to have this, like yeah. the gears turning. Yeah. It's kind of exciting. Like oh, it's super it's exciting. strange, like calling and hearing like the waiting noise and talking hearing to our nurses that yeah, we've talked it was, to for years. It was strange. Um but a good strange and, yeah. and that's why it's like earliest <sighs> the best case is James's sibling would be what we he would be almost two mm -hmm. when that sibling would be born. That's mm -hmm. best case. That's first transfer works, that's earliest date that we could possibly do a transfer that's no right. no problematic no things in tests and of course we know it could happen sooner right. things you know like but as far as like the fertility treatments go right that would be the and absolute well, soonest like i wouldn't be i don't know i'm not hoping for this but like from our experience it wouldn't surprise me if 10 years from now we look back and said like man i can't believe it took us seven months to get everything straight to even do a transfer so then like we're talking next summer right doing a transfer and yeah. now james is going to be three yeah. when mm -hmm. that born baby's born right and so you guys like so so much of our previous journey you guys were there for us for sending us good vibes all of that good stuff so we'll keep you updated so and I mean, it's kind of like an announcement yeah and then it's like we we can't even call until till may. may we can't even really do anything until like right. august yeah like test wise so this is just yeah. preliminaries april 26th it's impossible said pride it's risky said experience it's pointless said reason give it a try whispered the heart anonymous i may have transferred james into his past and i think i've crossed it. oh gosh it's, it's good, good to be home goals are, we know what we hope to accomplish. And believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions.